What is a YouTube? It's your boy Jay Breezy. Shoot my shot, cause Twizy. And I love Judge Judy. Most heated moments. Let's get straight to it. The plaintiff is suing the defendant for harassment. Ms. Lopez, it is your claim that the defendant harassed you and stalked you. The defendant says quite the opposite. On the other hand, the defendant mirrors her claim in his counterclaim. He also throws in a frivolous lawsuit claim. Stalking and harassing to him. And in addition, you filed a restraining order for no valid reason and then didn't show up. And you actually, you had not met because you met on social media. It must be odd to face your supposed stalker in court, at least for one of the parties to the case. Is this the first time that you've actually met face to face? Yes, Your Honor. As usual, Judge Judy is not interested in stories. She just wants answers. That's why she interrupts the plaintiff before the plaintiff can launch into her story. Contacted whom? The defendant was soliciting uh, clients for a law firm that he had just recently gotten hired with, and I had contacted the defendant for a friend who was in need of an attorney. So on September 30th... So you contacted him? I did, on September 30th of 2016. Okay. Surprisingly, the plaintiff claims the defendant is a stalker, but does not argue when he denies even knowing her. Have you ever met Lawrence? Never. You don't know who that is. I don't know who she is. I don't know who he is. Right. And she contacted you. You didn't contact her. The defendant's denial can't possibly be refuted by the plaintiff's evidence, but at least the plaintiff gets an A for effort. That is actually a citation issued uh, September 9th, 2016, where the defendant had received a speeding ticket three blocks down from my house, doing 80 in a 25 school zone. The evidence is terrible at best, and this irritates Judge Judy. Judge Judy lets the plaintiff know that she needs to do better than that. This doesn't say anything. Knew your ex-husband, which is the reason that you say he was harassing you. I want to know what it is, then where it is. And if you have it in a file, you'll get the file. At this point, Judge Judy's face tells us that she has lost all faith in the testimony of the plaintiff, if it can be called that. Oh, do you have any proof that Mr. Gaeta communicated with your ex-husband? Not directly communicated, but the defendant did tell me specifically that he did know him. He did? Yes. When did he tell you that? It was within the first week or two of us speaking between uh, September 30th. Well tell, me, well, tell me exactly what he said to you, Ms. Lopez. The plaintiff gives a lengthy testimony in a desperate attempt to link the defendant to her ex-husband. The defendant denies these allegations without batting an eye. Ms. Lopez. And at that point, I had asked him then if, if he was friends with him personally or, or what, and he said yes, that he was friends with him. Do you have that conversation with her? Not at all. Not at all. Judge Judy is generous enough to give the plaintiff a lifeline to find her proof. Or maybe Judge Judy is giving her enough rope to hang her case. I also have a civil restraining order that was three years issued, I believe March of 2016 as well. Okay, now I want you to go and find the proof that's in your file that the respondent is a personal friend of my ex-husband. Go find it. We'll recall the case. The case is recalled, and the evidence the plaintiff presents is even more flimsy than the last evidence she presented to Judge Judy. We're all on Facebook together. I don't know if you're familiar with Facebook, but the pictures will show up of the quote-unquote friends on each other's friends list. She looks like she's friends with a lot of people. Right, but my ex-brother-in-law and my ex-husband are also listed on there as well. That's what you have? That's what I have, yeah. Judge Judy asks a series... She pulled up saying he's stalking her and all he got, all she got is a mutual friend, bruh. I ain't gonna lie, that's L. That's L work. Series of questions that expose just how bad her case is. The plaintiff quite literally picked a random guy to harass. You were afraid of him? Yes. Did you show up at the protective order hearing? Uh, no, and I have a doctor's note because of... I don't... The answer is you no, did not unable. show up. Judge Judy uh -oh. does not entertain any more excuses from the plaintiff. Uh -oh. She grants the counterclaim, and it feels like poetic justice. If you are afraid, then what you do is you show up for a protective order. What you do is not harass somebody to make a seven-hour trip. <laughs> Hire a <laughs> Why does black dude smiling so hard with the high top, bro? Lawyer, and then not appear, and then refile. <laughs> That's harassment. <laughs> Just give me the date of the Oh, video. that dude look just like me for real, That's bro. That's harassment. This dude look just like me for real, bro. I hope he win the case. And his mom look he bad. Anyway, my bad. Just give me the date Hopefully of he'll the video. Hopefully he'll hoop her, too. The date of the video was on August 30th. Oh, she or bad, 29th. too. I'm sorry. That is the day that Lisa Palma said that if I was not out by the end of the day, that all of my things would be on the street. Oh, dang. Judge Judy cannot believe what she just watched. The plaintiff went full swat on the defendant. Put your hands on her. When, did when, you? Just a second. Okay, after did that you? Video? Did no. you? You kicked in her door. Play it no. again, please. Her. Kicked in the door. Play it again, please. Kicked in the door she with an attitude door? that was crazy. Judge Judy is not buying that excuse. After all, no one needs a genie to know the aftermath of the video. You kicked in 
her door for which she had paid rent for the entire yes. month of August. You had no right to kick in her door. Yes. The plaintiff had no right to do that to a lawful tenant. The plaintiff must regret appearing in that video now. Sometimes police Ugh. are stupid, and sometimes if she they have been hurt. If I'm she would have been severely hurt, hurt that bad. I, I'm, I would I'm, have went to jail. So just the, because I don't have pictures and videos of her jumping in and out the window with a U-Haul truck I was does not necessarily. Out the I, was I wasn't scared. even home, she, Tiffany. She I was at school. Me. Whoever did not jail the plaintiff for behavior against the defendant needs to be jailed. I know who she is. No, you don't. With regard to this, you're going to pay her exactly what she asks for which is $1,500. Judgment on the counterclaim for $1,500. You got a bad temper. You want to continue to rent to her? Absolutely. You do so at your own peril. Absolutely, he will. Goodbye. Absolutely. Why is that to me? The outcome of the case is unsurprising, and the defendant was pleased that everyone got what they deserve. A single mom sues for loans owed to her by her ex. Who do you live with? Right now, I live with me and my son. Do you support him? Yes. By myself, his father's not in the picture. The defendant gives a rundown of the transactions that the plaintiff helped him with. It's quite a list. Um, I met Mrs. Worthington in actually Iraq. Uh, I was on Facebook and I met her. It was three months prior to getting back bro, from Iraq. Bro, 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 bro. You meeting girls in Iraq, bro? I hope he not like a military soldier in the heat of battle. On Tinder, bro, because ain't no way. When I came back, we started dating. Iraq? If they sent you to Iraq, you supposed to be in war, bro. And you over here on Tinder, Facebook? Come on, trying to look for the girls? Trying to find out where the baddies at? Come on, bro, stay focused. Keep your head in the game, coach. And I have a four-year-old daughter, too. So at the time, it was hard to get back and forth from Cromwell to uh, Meriden. And Miss Worthington offered to pay for a vehicle for me. What um, was she doing at that time? She was working at the, the place that she was working at. And, and so she had a child then? Yes. The plaintiff's unruly behavior gets called by Judge Judy. Judge Judy strongly urges the defendant to do the needful. Why don't you go for them if you were strapped for money? Why don't you ask your mother for money? Then, Why do you ask a single mother who's working to support her child for money? I didn't ask for the money, ma'am. You took it. It was a gift. You took it. Yes, ma'am. Give it back. Judge Judy gives the plaintiff the most heartwarming smile before she offers the plaintiff good advice. <laughs> Hold on to your money. You put together a few hundred dollars, put it towards your son's college. Mm -hmm. Don't give it to a bum who's not going to return it to you. The defendant lists more stuff. <laughs> she called it. <laughs> she called him a bum and he just had to sit there and eat it. By the way, girl right here look bad, by the way. I don't know. I can't really tell because like 2040p, but yeah. He got from the plaintiff. Judge Judy does not stand for exploitation and gives a deserving judgment. You spent $700 on calling her? No, ma'am. It was prior to going to Iraq, so. So you couldn't get a phone turned on because you hadn't paid a phone bill. You sound like a real charmer. <laughs> Thank you. $700. Yes, ma'am. What else? Just miscellaneous stuff, too. I'm not interested in miscellaneous stuff. You have anything else other than miscellaneous stuff? Yes. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of twenty-two hundred dollars. Relevancy is always the theme of Judge Judy's court. If it is not relevant to the complaint, then you are better off not bringing it up. No. So I'm not getting involved in it because if you actually believe that he owed you money and there was so much animus, late October you wouldn't have gone to his house for a house party, which is really the crux of this case, which is the only part of it that I'm dealing with. Everyone knows you don't go to the party of a man you have beef with. Well, everyone except the plaintiff. You were invited to his home a month later, a month after you moved out. Yeah. For a party, I would not have gone if I was in an acrimonious situation. It's funny how the plaintiff acts like he was expecting that type of confrontation to go down peacefully. I went to the party in October. Uh, we, we discussed the deposit and the money's owed. And as you mentioned, I did have some resentment. So you so. shouldn't have gone. Yeah, I really shouldn't have gone. Guaranteed. Right, okay. You know, he basically got kind of, he got violent with me about it. He pushed me outside the door and then... Man, she looked like Kim K in the background. Oh, Unlock the door. Yeah. Unlock the door. He locked the door with my okay. keys inside, my Great. car keys inside, so... Another thing Judge Judy will not condone in her court is hearsay. Then I had to pay for a cab to get home. And? And then the next day he said a bunch of crazy things to our manager that we worked for. I don't know whether he did or not, that's okay. hearsay. Either way, though. Because there's nobody here. Judge Judy asks for simple proof that the plaintiff fails to produce. That will not help his case at all. I want to see the text where you said to him, I'm going to small claims court. You say you have a text. Is your phone right there? Uh, yeah, I do not have the text. 
Unfortunately, this is a new phone. Oh no, he capping! <laughs> he capping! Come on, bro. Everybody knows you got to take a screenshot. You're capping. You're not that stupid, bro. Ain't nobody that stupid. Do you got eyebrows or your eyebrows just blonde or do you just not have eyebrows? I can't You know say. how many times I hear people, how did you get a new phone when you lost your job? What you're suing for here is lost wages. When yes. did you get a new phone? It was a very affordable phone, Your Honors. <laughs> He said it's a very affordable phone, Your Honor, bro. Just admit that you capping, bro. I mean, he can't admit that he's capping. Because then he'll go to jail for perjury, lying on the stand. Bro, bro just lied in the courtroom, bro. Capping. He better pull out a flip phone talking about it's a very affordable phone. Boy, better pull out a burner. Boy, better pull out a track phone. You know a person is intimidating when the person makes you agree to be thrown out after answering some questions. Listen, I'm going to do my drill. When I'm satisfied that I'm going to throw you both out. Yes, John. Great. Why rely on a conventional counterclaim when you can get an unnecessary protective order against a coworker in response to getting sued? And I would like to see the date that you filed it and the allegations that you make. Okay, I, I have the petition and I also have the uh, temporary order. If you let's like see the petition. Bro, you know who he look like? He look like long neck, bro. That's who he look like, bro. He look like long neck. The plaintiff narrates a lot of white isolated MSK. incidents that have nothing to do with the case. You can see how Judge Judy feels about that. So the incident that occurred at my house, as it states in the petition, uh, he was sexually harassing a house guest upon being asked to stop. He berated her using... Who cares? Okay. I kicked him out. Who cares? The defendant has already messed up this question once. Judge Judy gives him another chance to maybe do better. And I want you to tell me mm -hmm. what he did that inspired you after you were served with a small claim case to file a protective order. Judge Judy lets the defendant in on some information that is contrary to what he believes. So I want you to tell me specifically mm -hmm. what Mr. Sylvester said or did to you that inspired Shout you out, to file for a protective order the day after you were served with a small claims case. The day after I was served with a small claims case, it was in my belief that he was going to continue to harass me while I was at work, and the, therefore I filed the protection order. I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. You abused the system. Your feelings are irrelevant to the law, and that is a fact. One that Judge Judy has to make clear. Your mother cares what you believe. Maybe your sister cares what you believe. Maybe your mother cares how you feel. Maybe your sister cares how you feel. Feel. The law doesn't give a rat's ass how you feel. Mm -hmm. The law believes in facts. If he is helping. <laughs> bro said, bro said. Mm hmm. Bro said, mm -hmm. yeah, no, nah, my bad. Nah, I should know that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I should know. I, I, yeah, my bad. Yeah, my, 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 my bad. My bad, my bad. Feel. Bro, look, bro look like he finna cry. Bro look like. <laughs> that, that dude said, mm, yeah, yeah, my, my bad. <laughs> feel. My bad. The law doesn't give a rat's ass how you feel. Mm -hmm. The law believes in facts. If he is telling the truth. Then Bird needs to make sure his earthly affairs are settled. <laughs> judge Judy oh is God. right. No sensible judge oh would grant God. that order knowing the facts. So far, I've asked you three times to give me something specific that Mr. Sylvester said or did to you that inspired you to file for a protective order against him, excluding him from your workplace, because that's what you asked for. Aside. Excluding him from your workplace. And I guarantee you, on Bird's life, <laughs> that you did not tell. How's she gonna put it on somebody else's life? I know the I know the police officer looking like. I know he ain't with that side eye, bro. Who you were requesting a, this protective order that you worked in the same place. I made it very clear. Oh, I judge. don't believe that. Then, I made it very then, clear I don't the believe judge. that because then the, then you're telling me that the judge was a moron. Judge Judy refuses to entertain the possibility of a judge granting such an order. She is absolutely mad that the defendant would suggest the idea. The judge suspended that, it. He didn't issue a restraining. He didn't issue a permanent restraining order. No, 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 no. You asked for. That's not what I'm saying to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Let's make ourselves perfectly clear. Yes, ma'am. You requested a protective order uh -oh. on an emergency basis. Bro, look like he in the principal's office and he getting a choking, bro. 
If you in the principal's office with me, bro, don't be stuttering, don't be stammering, just don't talk, bro. If you're going to be stuttering and stammering, just don't talk, bro. If you're going to be sounding like your heart and your shoe, don't just don't talk, bro. Just don't talk, bro. You he was, he was definitely one of them kids that folded when the teacher or the principal asked him a question, bro. On an emergency basis, excluding him from your workplace. By the way, by the way, I was too. So, <laughs> by the way, I was too. Probably until I was like, I ain't gonna lie, I used to fold probably until like I was a senior in high school, bro, which is like last year, bro. I folded until I was like 17. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a folder. You not want me to, you not want me to cap it up with you, boy. I used to fold. You know what I'm saying? Y'all hear those police sirens? It don't matter. does not look phased by the fact that he abused the court process and consequently his co-worker. The defendant looks ready to do it again. Service of the actual Listen, document. Listen, I think that you overstepped it and you abused the system and you abused him. The real issue here might be the casual girlfriend and not the abusive court process. It wouldn't be surprising if this was payback for the plaintiff hitting on his girlfriend. Is it somebody that you were dating? Uh... You uh, what is that? That's either a yes or a no. Yes, we were dating. Right. Casually. So while I'm not getting involved with the rest of this nonsense, I am awarding him money for lost wages. Okay. Because I think that your actions not only abuse me as part of a system, because you used it in retaliation. Your girlfriend didn't feel threatened enough to go and seek a protective order. And you never sought a protective order before you were served with a small claims case. This one personally offended her pride as an officer of the court. But Judge Judy used her power to even the case out. And this was after the party. It's for the same... Just a second. We're done. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,500. We're finished. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, uh, ooh. Like, comment, subscribe. Switch out the letters down below. I'm out. Peace. Stay breezy.